Welcome to the Worldwide Center of Mathematics. In today's video, I'll be going over the advanced problem of the week. For the full problem and the full solution transcript, you can see the link in the description of this video on our YouTube channel. So this week's advanced problem of the week involves something that a lot of us know and love called fractals. <clears throat> so this particular fractal is called the Von Koch curve. So it's, it's created by taking, you just draw initially one line segment, which we'll call S0, and it has length L0. Then the way that we create the second line segment and every line segment from then on is we remove the middle third of that line segment and we replace it with the two sides of an equilateral triangle of the length of one third of the length basically of the chunk that we just took out. So what we end up getting here is something that looks like this. And then you, you actually repeat this um, an, infin an infinite number of times. Put three dots here. <clears throat> this goes on and on and on. So as you can see in this one, we just took the same thing, single line segment, took out the middle third, replaced it with the size of an equilateral triangle, and you get something that looks like this. And once you iterate it out until, until infinity, it will end up looking kind of like a snowflake. So the question for this week was to, it had two parts, and the first part was to prove that this curve has infinite arc length. So the way that we're going to do this is kind of just by visually and geometrically looking at it. So say we call the length of the first iteration L0. So then we can look at the length of the second one by saying, okay, so we know that this line segment has length of one third times, times the initial line segment because that was how we created the second line segment. So, and we know that this has length one third, this has length one third, and this has length one, length one third, excuse me. So we know that we have one third plus one third plus one third plus one third. So I'll write up here that L naught has length L naught. <clears throat> and L1 has length, as we just determined, four thirds times L naught. And I'm going to write all of these formulae in terms of L naught, just for clarity. So, and then to find the length of L2. So we look down here and we see that one of these lines, one of these small lines has a length of one third squared times L naught. Because it's one third of one third of L naught. See how this was L naught, one third L naught, one third times one third L naught. So how many of these do we have? We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So we're going to end up having 16 ninths. Whoops, 16. <clears throat> make, sure, make sure this is correct here. 16 ninths times L naught. See, it's 16 ninths because each, the length of each one of these is 1 third times 1 third, which is 1 ninth. So we have 16 of those one ninth length pieces. So we can go on and on. This iterates out until infinity. And so we end up getting here, um, I mean, actually, as you can see here, 16 over 9 is actually equal to 4 thirds squared. So another way to look at this formula would be to say, OK, so we have here 4 thirds to the 0 times L naught, because anything to the 0 is just 1. And then we have here 4 thirds to the 1 uh, L naught. And then down here, we have 4 thirds squared. Just rewrite this here for clarity. 4 thirds squared times L naught. So as you can see, you might be able to kind of deduce a general formula coming out of these. So what we end up getting here is, um, I'll write the formula. Uh, I will just erase this up here, actually. Uh, so, the curve that we're trying to look at iterates out until infinity. So, we want to have a general formula for the length of the nth iteration. So, we can deduce from looking at this that the length of the nth iteration is going to be. 4 thirds to the n times L naught, which is the length of our starting one. So to, to prove that this has infinite arc length, we're just going to take the limit as n goes to infinity. So the limit as we iterate out into infinity 
of ln, so of 4 thirds to the n times L naught, and this is going to go to positive infinity. So we have just proved <clears throat> that this fractal curve has infinite arc length. So the second part of the problem asks us to calculate the similarity dimension. So the similarity dimension is actually a special case of the fractal dimension uh, defined in terms of strictly self-similar fractals. And this is, as you can see, a strictly self-similar fractal. And it's actually also an interesting case of a, f a, of a, of a curve that is uh, everywhere continuous but nowhere differentiable, which I think is interesting. So the, I'll give you the formula of the similar di similarity dimension, and then we'll calculate it. So the formula of the similarity dimension is as follows. D, which stands for dimension, um, is equal to ln m over ln r, where m, oops, where m is equal to the number, the number of copies in each successive iteration. And these copies will be scaled down. And we account for that scaling by r, which is the scaling factor. Okay. So let's calculate m and r for this specific fractal. So looking here, to try to calculate the exact number of copies, we're going to start here. And we want the number of copies of this line. It can be scaled down, so it's going to be scaled down here. So how many copies of this line do we have? We have one, two, three, four. And you can see, so now this will apply for the rest of the curve. So now we take this, and we see how many iterations of this do we have in this curve down here. We have one, two, three, four. So in each successive iteration, you're always going to have four copies of the previous one. They'll be scaled down, but they'll be exact copies. <clears throat> exact scaled copies, excuse me. So here, for this case, we have m equal to four. And so now let's determine r, the scaling factor of this fractal. So consider this. It's easiest to consider the very first one, I believe. So each we're looking at each copy of this one is scaled down by a factor of three because it's one third of the length. And as you can see here, this is scaled down. It's a little bit more difficult to see here. But we scale this by a factor of three as well to get here. So we have overall our scaling factor r is going to be equal to three. <clears throat> so now plugging into our formula, we have the similar, similarity dimension of this fractal is going to be ln four over ln 3, which approximately equals 1.262. So this is actually pretty interesting. So we're used to, in, in objects that we see in our everyday lives, we're used to things being um, having a clear-cut, discrete dimension, you know, one-dimensional, two-dimensional, three-dimensional. But this has a dimension that's somewhere between 1 and 2, which, when you kind of think about it, makes sense. Because the, the end result of this is going to be some, is going to be a line that's not quite two-dimensional, but also not quite one-dimensional. So that's a pretty interesting way to interpret um, the fractal dimension. So that will be this week's, um, this week's advanced problem of the week. So now, for more problem of the week videos, you can see our playlist. To subscribe to us on YouTube, click here. And for more math, go to centerofmath.org. Thank you for watching.